My name is Thundercat and you're watching Jam Pop Radio. Welcome back to Jam Hot Radio. I am so excited to be here with my Women's History Month feature, Thundercat. How are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing good, thank you so much for being here. We have tried to do this a few times this month. It finally worked out. Diversity <laughs> excites talent, my friend. So also I wanna give a huge shout out to SO Arts for letting us crash their beautiful space. If you're not familiar with SO Arts, um, they are down on the 300 block of Queen Street featuring so many amazing artists, painters, designers, uh, what are we, uh, jewelry makers, you name it, they have it. I love supporting the local art community. This space is the perfect place to do it. So make sure you check it out if you haven't yet. Thanks, Sue. Thank you, Sue. <laughs> so we're gonna jump right in to a question I ask everyone. Name an album you should have in your collection. Why does it inspire you? Why do we need it? Tell me all about it. I'm gonna say Lupe Fiasco's Food and Liquor. Ooh. Um, and my reasoning behind that answer, I'm not 100% sure. Maybe it's because it's like the only album I know intro to outro, like every word, like I can speak along with him the entire time. And it's been a while since I've like been able to do that. So I think that speaks in itself. Yeah. Um, if it's, in, I think it's definitely inspiring. If you don't know it, I suggest you look it up. Uh, listen to all the songs, His intro to outro. And I, I hate to even admit it, I kind of forget about Lupe Fiasco sometimes, but then the minute I put his music on, I'm like, shit, how and could he's I? In my, I forget about him sometimes too, and he's in my top five, so. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's easy to do. Yeah. He kind of, uh, in my own personal opinion, he kind of fell off a little bit. That's debatable though, but yeah. um, food and liquor for sure. All right, all right. I'm going to have to go bump that today because I don't know how familiar I am with that whole album, but cool. So ta let's talk about your poetry. A lot of the stuff that you write and you speak on is just so raw and so real. How long have you been writing and how do you honestly have the courage to share it with so many people? It's like such a vulnerable state, but I, I love it. So let's hear it. So I've been, I've always written. And I think that's like the main thing that, that writers say when you ask them how long they've been writing. I've been writing since I could hold pencils. Right. Since I was a baby. Yeah. I literally have though, but as far as Honing in on poetry, um, I would say it's been about six years. Um, six years since I've been writing, maybe only about three total since I found spaces where I feel comfortable performing. Um, here in this, it's changing a lot now because of the, the people that are like in, in ahead of the, the movement, I guess you would want to say. But when I was first getting into it, there wasn't anywhere to like go. There's no like regular open mics. There's no poetry performances to just watch. There was like nothing like that. Um, so it took me a while to like find a constant or like a, a continual place to go to to be able to do poetry. But it's been about five, six years. Um, and as far as finding the courage to to. I know that's such a loaded question. I don't even really know. Um, I don't even put it into like, I think, I don't know if I purposely just don't think about it um, or what, but leading up to it, like I wouldn't say I get nervous, but I, there's definitely some adrenaline happening there. And that just has an effect on your body no matter what, even if it's good adrenaline. And so leading up to it, I might get like the shakes or like the jitters or something, and then definitely getting off. But for some reason, just standing up there, it's like being a different person. Yeah. Like I used to, uh, I'll use Beyonce as an example, even though I don't care for her, but we don't have to get into that. Um, back when, um, and we don't know, like how long she's been referring like having her alter ego or whatever yes. but when she started letting us in on it like the whole Sasha Fierce thing yes. I used to think she was a crazy person I was like what do you mean like you are someone else while you're performing you're just Beyonce yeah. but no like, it's, so you, it's true. very true like I literally become Thundercat like when I'm on stage and like I don't have a choice to be anything else so yeah. that's how it happens I guess yeah you get into that mode when you're probably backstage and you're like alright girl it's time, to, it's time yeah. to go let's do it mm -hmm. I love that I love that and I I really resonate with that because 
crazy. I too thought Beyonce was a little bit crazy in that movement. <laughs> but then I started doing things like talking to myself in the mirror and like mm -hmm. hyping myself up and I'm like, okay, maybe I have an alter ego too. Right. And yeah. You have to ride that wave yeah. sometimes mm -hmm. to like remember your power a little bit. Yeah. So. And also I guess a little bit of it stems from the fact that I know if I don't say it, it's not gonna get said. Um with yeah. some yeah. some topics in particular. Yeah. Like That's there's some topics that get spoken about by poets widespread just because like I don't know like it's just something that we gravitate towards but where when it comes to things that I individually talk about that most people don't that's probably the fuel behind it knowing that it needs to be said out loud yes it really does and a lot of I just music moves me you know you hear different beats and melodies and like it you know whether you're going through something or not it hits you in different ways but my I mean I've always loved writing poetry but my eyes have been open to spoken word poetry since meeting Sir Domini mm -hmm. and there is just such a beautiful world out there of just creative minds that are not only speaking their truth but you're shedding light on so many fucking heavy and important topics that in, a, in such a beautiful way that really makes people think so I really appreciate the work that you guys are doing um, so that kind of leads me into my next question uh, explain to our friends here what the phrase teaching artist means what is that all about what age ranges do you work with and um, I can imagine like how, how is that yeah. so it's definitely I'll start with the latter so it's definitely interesting um, um, a teaching artist friend of mine that goes by Worldwide Wednesday. Yeah. Um, we just happened to be, uh, we were doing residencies at a school called Wharton, Wharton Elementary. And so there was a part, we were early, so we were in the hallway before the time where the, the teachers would let us into the classroom. So we were just talking. And he put into perspective to me that we get paid more in an hour than those teachers get paid for spending all day. And so it's been it's been eye opening. Um, it definitely adds a, a different like point of view to it because it's very easy to to feel like you're not being taken seriously as an artist no matter what you do. Yeah. But then. Um, you go in and you see that that's like a widespread thing. It's not just artists, it's teachers, it's it's whatever work you could do. There's always gonna be some part of the public that does not take your job seriously until they have to do it. Um, so just like just us noticing that the teachers aren't really being paid their worth, but then sometimes, not all the time, and definitely not at work, and so don't try to quote me and be messy. Um, sometimes I get that vibe from teachers. Yeah. Like they don't take us seriously, yeah. And it's but then just they see interesting. You for, but then they see you do your thing. They see us be, like in real time, be able to corral their kids and make a lesson stick in their head that they've been trying to all year. So you make that, a believer out of them real quick. That in and of itself is like rewarding. Also, another eye-opening experience. It's all about like something that I've been focusing on more since I've become an artist is or a full-time artist is perspective and realizing that everybody has a different one and literally any and everything can influence it. It's so so true. Um, it's so true. But and that is like way off topic. Oh, no, that's that's great. I think it was what how did I become a teaching artist? Yeah, so um in this in Pennsylvania I'm not sure if it's all of Pennsylvania actually or if it's just like our area um, I'm actually a teaching artist through the PA Council on the Arts, which is a Miller, Millersville program okay. Or I got involved in the program through Millersville okay. So the the teaching artist application that I fill out is provided by Millersville and then it, it, it makes me a part of, it makes me a teacher on the council of the arts, which I, I think is that. all of PA. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, I just filled out a um, friend of mine recommended um, that I seek out the application, fill it out, handed it in. They had the, the little process where they review it. And then I received notification that I was a teaching artist. And then basically after you get accepted, um, you work with, the, um, in my case, the, the woman's name is Marcy Nelligan that works at the Ware Center um, for Millersville. So you team up with her, she lets you know what opportunities are available, um, like if there's anyone like doing a call for artists or there's a school that has a need. 
and um, more recent. So I started off just taking the open availabilities and right. doing whatever was there. Mm -hmm. um, this year, I've been more focused on creating my own opportunities yes. and finding ways to, to still teach but do it outside of schools. Yes. Um, so I have a workshop coming up at Red Rose Books. I'm excited about that. Yeah. yeah let's I, let's talk about that a little bit too. Okay. Can. I mean, I, I you, we're clearly about to, but <laughs> yeah. So I have a, a workshop coming up on. Um, it starts April seventh and will be every Friday from April 7th till May 12th. Um, and that is not in a school, but an opportunity to still be a teaching artist because it's through the program still. So um, I've been trying to find ways to do that same thing I do in schools for everyone. Um, so there's, and it helps out like involving the, um, the PA Art Council helps out like the host like with costs. Yeah. So if there's um if that was something that might have been holding an organization back from doing something like that because they would have to foot all the money, um that's something to keep in mind that if you're you can reach out to me or to the to the council on the arts or whoever and get yourself a residency set up because there's um of course there's all types of schematics behind it that I don't really understand yet. But there's like a um, there's like match funding available and it depends on how long you want the residency to be, what exactly the residency is going to be about depends on how much the host uh, fronts and how much the PA Council on the Arts host. I was trying to find a shorter way to say it, but I don't think I can. Um, so yeah, and it's just like different levels. Um, it's like a mix and match sort of thing. So that's what I've been focusing on this year. It's not just like taking what's available to me, but creating my own opportunities as well. Cheers to that. And it's so nice that we live in a city that is just so full of so many beautiful artists mm -hmm. and opportunities and grants mm -hmm. that I, you know, I did what I would have never guessed that was. A, I mean, I don't know. I didn't yeah, know before, um, before it was actually my friend, um, Sir Dominic Jordan, that told me about it, and before he let me in on it, I had no idea either. Yeah. Um, I didn't even know that was a thing. Like that was when I found out, it was like the coolest thing in the world to me. Now, of course, just like every system, the system has flaws. Right. Um, it's like they're doing the best that they can and that's probably subjective or relative in my opinion they're doing the best that they can right now mm -hmm. not to say that they can't or shouldn't improve right. but um the more that they work with us the more that they'll understand yes. the needs that they need to yes. meet for us and i know a lot of my artist friends um especially a lot of my visual artist friends have gripes with the city on how certain systems work but we have to be willing to stick them out um, so they they can see for themselves why they should be different and then for the artists after us They won't have so many yes. hiccups. I love that. I love that you have that mentality and it sounds like they're Open to receiving that feedback. Yeah, and I know that I can be a little like everyone's not as How do I say this it's like there's some people that are just like no this is wrong It should be different and that's it and then they see a little gullibleness or a little vulnerability where I'm stepping in trying to be like the understanding person mm -hmm. and I get that but um, it's 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 one of those things where you're not gonna know unless you give it a shot exactly and just being like not bullheaded but bullheaded and like like yeah but having a voice and having you have a voice you have a you have a vision for what you put out mm -hmm. so at the end of the day yes it's, it's good to meet people where they're at but you don't want to compromise what you're putting out. Yeah, so something that I like to say is that I can meet you where you are, but I'm not obligated to stay there. So, yeah. We need to say that one more time. <laughs> we will meet you where you are, but she's not obligated to stay there. Yeah, okay? I can be understanding, but it has a limit. Um, and that goes for like, literally anything we can do exactly. in life. Yeah, any exactly. type of relationship you have, any type of anything like yeah. you can meet you shouldn't be so full of yourself that you refuse to meet someone where they are but and then the person that you are meeting where they are shouldn't be so yeah. whatever Open they to are. take 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 and yeah instead of realizing that after the taking there needs to be some reciprocation yes. or yes. some growth or some, exactly. something something <laughs> and then well and also too just speaking on what you shared earlier Shout out, this is her one year anniversary of leaving her job and doing this full time, which that leap is so scary, but it's so fulfilling. But you get to a point where you are working full time in the arts, you can't, there's some things you just can't compromise, especially because this is your, you know, it's your livelihood, not the end of the day. 
words, not just like stop. People will, you know, stop. respect yeah. that. And you've, um, sure, people may not always be able to, I ran into my first, oh, you're too expensive. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh. Yeah. Those are my I favorite. Like, I'm like, at first I was like, oh, should I? But no, I'm never gonna, I, I put out good work, I'm not gonna. Your you first know? instinct is to always feel bad. Yeah. Or feel like you overdid it. Yeah. Or feel like you're pushing it when, you're not. No. Um, and it, it was followed up with a, we'll be able to hit those numbers maybe in six months. So, you know, it was a good conversation, but that was my first one that I was like, hmm. But it, it's so important to never, you know, you know what you're able to produce. You know what you're able to give these communities and these people that you're working with. And sometimes it really does take maybe them seeing one, you know, campaign you may have worked on, or in your case, one event that you may have done, and they're like, okay, now I see, now I see why that's what her rate is, or whatever yeah. it might be, but, yeah. and of course, being in, working in the arts, it's never, or me, for me, I can't speak for you, but it's never about the money at the end of the day, but it's, I'm also not going to compromise mm -hmm. what I'm putting out. That's a, that's a really big lesson that I've had to keep drilling into my head, um, it's not like I don't want to my one of my biggest fears about being an artist is coming off like I'm in it for the money just because I now have to stand on certain things because it's my livelihood it's no longer there was things that I could let go when this was a hobby right I can't let things go anymore because as much as y'all as much as people love me and Thunder and all this and that and stop me on the street my landlord doesn't give a crap that I'm Thundercat he probably doesn't even know, um, and if he does, then he truly does not care because if I like a smidgen late with anything that he needs from me, yeah, straight to God court, forbid. straight to oh, court, <laughs> and it's just like, yeah, it's just like that's been another thing that has kind of like put things into perspective for me. For every person that cares and believes and supports, there's always going to be three or four that don't. Um, to like the biggest extreme, mm -hmm. but they, it's not just that they're indifferent, they're very anti. Yeah. Um, and Which yeah. I know we could probably get on a soapbox about that all day, but one thing I think I've realized in the creative arts field, and you're like, you're not just like up there like reciting the fucking national anthem, you're genuinely pouring your heart and soul out about topics that make people uncomfortable sometimes. It's my favorite, so, that's fine. Yeah, and I love that. <laughs> But you do get those people every once in a while that are like so afraid of change or so afraid to face things that you are bringing up for them that they're like, oh, well, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna turn my turn my eye on that, and yeah. and that just gets that goes back to the fact that they just unfortunately haven't faced their own shit. That's really what it comes down to, and I have to remind myself that I'm not rated E. Yeah. I'm like just I'm not for everyone and yeah. whoever I'm not for they tend to make themselves very apparent yeah and then it's just like a if it if it doesn't let it if it doesn't apply let it fly or something like yeah. that like yeah. if it's just not for you then move on yeah. I don't need your That's comment fine. I don't you, need your you, input exactly just move on it's right. not for you well I'm glad to hear and I can very much tell that it doesn't affect you as an artist because you are so rooted in your truth and I really do appreciate that about your work because it's it's hard because you are putting your heart and soul into what you're doing so yeah. for it's it's beautiful when it's well received but you can't help but be like oh well that that sucks that person did this this and this but yeah. never compromise for those people that have to be watered down in order mm -hmm. to live you know what i mean yeah. um okay so we do have to give a shout out to sir dominique we definitely need to get, yes, he's a wonderful human being, but he is the reason that my eyes have been open to the world of spoken word poetry. Mm -hmm. I write and I edit for a living, so I'm, I love it so much, but to dive into the realm of poetry and just personally, after meeting and sitting down with Dom at the end of last year, I started writing for myself again, and he really inspired me. and. More as like a form of closure for myself. I'll probably get up at one of the open mic nights and, and whip it out. But how, like, what is your advice to people who are looking to dive into a new passion, whether it be in the creative writing arts or poetry and whatnot? How, what advice do you have for aspiring poets? Well, I'll use this example for creatives in general or somebody that's thinking about diving into something creative in general not just poetry submerse yourself in it um, and then 
if your feelings of curiosity and um, being drawn towards it start to like get deeper the more that you go for example for a poet it would be going to an open mic or going to a, a poetry showcase and just as an observer just so you can watch if you find yourself being like i want to do that i think because that's exactly how it was for me yeah i uh my senior year of high school in creative writing um my teacher played videos from this show that used to be on hbo called deaf poetry jam oh i've never seen that it was it's basically like have you ever seen deaf comedy jam yeah it was the same thing but with poets oh, so um it was like same stage same setup um live audience live um spoken word poetry and the episode that i was watching that day had alicia keys on it Oh, and that was another good thing about that show is that they bridged the gaps between um, people that like strictly poet and people that you know from other reasons mm -hmm. that were there to poet. Oh, so cool. um, they would have like Alicia Keys was on, Kanye West was on, Dave Chappelle was on. Oh, that's um, awesome. Yeah, and his poems were hilarious. Yeah. But the first episode that I watched was the Alicia Keys one. And I was like, Alicia Keys? Like back then, I was, I'm a kid. Now I know all the ties between hip hop and poetry mm -hmm. and music in general. Right. But back then, it was so. It took me aback to see her. Yeah. And she read this. She performed this poem called "Prisoner of Words." And by the time she was done, I was like, I want to do that. Yeah. I was already writing poetry at the time, and I was like. I didn't know you could like write it down and then you don't just have to pass your notebook around to your friends so they can read it. You can right. perform it. Yeah. I didn't and know. Speak that. it in such a way that's different than reading I don't for lack of a better term, like a normal poem. Yeah. You know, like when you flow and you read just a page poem. poetry. Yes. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. It's just it's it's so beautiful, especially for people who do genuinely love music a little mm -hmm. bit too, because in a sense you're like you're rhyming. You know, there's a there's a flow rhyming. To it. There's, yeah, there's cadence. A flow. There's, yeah. yeah, there's rhyme scheme. You are basically a rapper. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, yeah, it's and there's like so many ties between it all that like I'm aware of now, where it all makes sense. But at the time, it was just so shocking i guess or like i was just so your eyes were open to a new world yeah i was it was like an awakening sort yeah. of yeah and i was like wow that was really cool and it was i felt like i hadn't experienced any of the things that she was talking about but i felt so much emotion behind it that my immediate thought was like i want to make people feel like that i love that yeah so um i had always written like short stories and plays and like musicals and stuff like that and then I, I started focusing more on poetry and then of course there was times throughout the years I would put the pen down pick it back up put it down pick it back up not really take it seriously it was all just for me right and then I did a um that same teacher held a uh, our own like little poetry performance at school and after I did my poem I wasn't like I wasn't like anything close to being a shred of popular in high school um I like didn't want to I didn't talk to people I didn't um, I would didn't uh, participate in like school activities or none of that but after I did that it was like people like saw me for the first time and it was just it was basically just over after that, I, love that. <laughs> yeah, I didn't exactly have chills. anywhere That's to so uh, I didn't exactly have anywhere to go but I knew I was gonna find it eventually mm -hmm. um, so I just stuck with it stuck with it kept writing and then these spaces just appeared. Yeah. <laughs> so I found it's all here. universal. I love that so much. And shout out to teachers that genuinely take the time to incorporate exciting new ways of teaching mm -hmm. in their classroom. Because and it was I was this close to it not happening because it took until my senior year of high school. Yeah. And we were at the point of the year where they were just letting the seniors do whatever. Right. So exactly. I was this close. So the to fact that it. that teacher had enough love and care in her heart to be like, hey, let's do one of our own, even <laughs> though it's like she could have easily probably thrown on a, another movie or yeah. whatever for you guys. Mm -hmm. that, that's awesome. I love yeah. that. That's I'm very great. grateful for her. I'm yeah. not sure where she is or what she's doing. But thanks, uh, girl. Yeah. We love you. Miss Custer. Miss Custer, shout out. Mrs. Custer, I'm oh, sorry. Mrs. Yeah. Mrs. Uh, Garden Spot. I don't, I don't know if she's still there. I really hope you're still teaching. But if you're not, then you're probably on a beach somewhere. So. Yeah, that sounds yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> so what does the rest of 2023 look like for you? Whew, so the 
There's been a lot of travel, um, and the travel will continue. I actually is got that, my first international booking. I love that. Okay, I think I saw that. Now, is that through the teaching artist stuff, or is that just... No, that's just me being a performer. I love yeah, that. So, Where are you going again? Um, Canada. Okay. So yeah, I'm going to Canada in July. Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to Texas for another interview like this um, in June. Um, I'm going to, er, there's a couple places coming up, like I'm involved in, this year for me was about all like the more technical side of things, like um, for one thing, um, my focus is trying to become like as well-rounded of a poet as I can. I don't want to be able to be labeled. I don't want anyone to say, oh, she's just a performance poet, a spoken word poet. Oh, she's just like, she just has like her aggressive poems. I've been working on page poetry. Um, I finished a manuscript for a book that I sent off for um, competition. Nice. So I'll, if I win that, then they'll um, publish the book. I get like 20 free copies or so, $3,000. Um, and like their full support from their publishing company on pushing the book. I love that. If I don't win, I'm going to be looking into how to publish it myself, yeah. like on Amazon yeah. or something. Yeah. Um, there's another competition um, called Blackberry Peach uh, writing competition, and they're having like this big conference in June. Um, in Des Moines, Iowa. Oh wow! Um, another random. thing, another thing that just happened to fall into place because my little sister and my mother were in Iowa. Oh wow! And yeah, so see that Iowa, is what I'm talking about. That's divine timing. Mm -hmm. And I've been, I told her like I've been. Uh, they've been there for about four years. I only got to visit one time so far, and it was um, maybe like a year into them living there. So I haven't been up there since. And every time I want to come for like either her birthday or holiday something else comes up and my sister has been so gracious and I don't know if she actually feels this way but she do, does a good job of making me feel better about not making it and right. stuff like that yeah. and she's yeah. like very supportive of the vision but when I told her that there's a chance that poetry would finally bring me to Iowa she lost her mind oh I bet um, yeah and I, I was like looking at the fine print and I'm like okay like what do I win if I enter this competition and I saw like that the big gathering was in Des Moines I was like of all places you're like all right I'm going of all I'm the in. places that I've traveled to to do poetry it's never been anywhere that far yeah west yeah West. I'm not the right person to ask. Me neither. We'll say West. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that uh, it, okay. <laughs> and um, yeah, I'm excited about it. So it's like I'm waiting to hear about like a couple things that I'm in the running for, like um, the City Poet Laureate. Oh um, yes. Those competitions. There's I'm getting my exhibit ready for the train station. Yeah. Um, so tell our friends when they can see that at the train station. So I'm, I'm gonna have an art exhibit up at the Lancaster Amtrak station from April 4th until June 4th, and it's going to be. Um, I asked them specifically for that time slot because April is National Poetry Month. Um, so not only is April National Poetry Month, April is when they're announcing who won Poet Laureate. Oh, so I'm that. trying to like set myself up for this little Lancaster yes, tour. Yes, <laughs> I love that. Um, but I would have to win, of course. So. Yeah. Um, well, we, we're putting that positivity out in the universe, so we will be winning. Yes. <laughs> if it ain't um, right now, it's going to be later. And it's just real. it's such a treat and such a joy to watch you just put your heart and soul out there. And... Um, honestly inspire so many other people who probably have journals upon journals of written. I think that's you know? been the craziest part of the journey. Um, all of the poets that are popping up and they might not consider themselves po poets but I do because literally all it takes is for me is for you to put your pen or pencil to the paper. Yeah. And if you're a typer then it, all it takes is for you to start clapping yeah, away and exactly. you are a poet. Yeah. Um, and that's so refreshing because I'm sure one could easily be like, not be, yeah, and, yeah, and not be supportive. But the fact that people like you and Sir Dominique and Worldwide Wednesday are just so inspiring, and you, you genuinely want to see your city do good, mm -hmm. and that yeah, shows. That shows in the work that you put out, and it, it is super inspiring. And that is why Alex actually um, and I went to one of the open mics at a concrete rose mm. and um, he ended up getting up getting up there and no way speak. i missed it yeah 
um, unplanned, but it was just... It's one of those things. It, like, it really is. You're, that's why I'm saying if you're interested, if you think, even if you think you're interested in writing, go to something like that because you will, after that night or maybe, the, maybe it'll take two times or three times for you to go. Yeah. After you feel that feeling where the electric like, energy, I don't are, even know how to explain. I'm a regular writer and performer, and there's times where I go to open mic just to support and listen. And people, as soon as I walk through the door, oh, you performing? Oh, are you signing up? No, no, no. Halfway through the night, I'm like, oh, I gotta get up there. Right? Like, yeah, because yeah, it like, is so <laughs> inspiring to see. You know, people leave their heart out there, and it's you know, I've been in an interesting season of my own life, and after I had my interview with Dom about three weeks later I wrote something that was just so meaningful to me personally and I didn't realize that there was a door in my life that I needed to close and that poem helped me do that yeah and I'm like that is the power of art yeah honestly. he's really good about honing in on that and recognizing that he has that power I'm still in denial about it um, but he always reminds me that so I have this showcase called Funda Mimosas yes and it started literally in like a basement venue um we love that place we miss that place no shade i really miss tcp a lot um but there were people he had to, he constantly reminds me that there were people sitting in the audience writing poetry for the chance to sign up for open mic my heart and that is like saying it out loud like if another one of my friends had accomplished that i'd be like oh my gosh it's such a big deal but yeah. for some reason those things like that about myself just don't seem like real or like a real accolade or something to like you know be excited about not that it's something to be unexcited about but it's just like right. I, it, I have a hard time accepting that things are a big deal when they're about me so I know, yeah I think I know we all struggle feels. with that but I yeah. think for me it's turned up a notch <laughs> well I, I encourage you just as I'm sure Dom has it's so important, especially when you do work in the creative arts full time now, mm -hmm. you have to be able to take a step back and say, okay, what did I do in the last six months? And what did I do a year ago? And yeah. how does my life look? Holy shit, I need to be proud of myself for that. That's you, a good you, point. You I got really really to bask in it. I have, have to force to. myself to, to look at the differences in, in the time. Um, what was I doing this time last year? What was I doing this time six months ago? And another thing that has um, helped me to realize just how much I do is to create to-do lists. As tedious and like minuscule as it seems, it really helps me put into perspective what I actually get done, yes. which is a lot. Yeah. And um, for someone that's been like in the in the working like field since I was like 14, mm -hmm. if I'm not physically exhausted for eight hours a day i don't feel like i've done anything but um that's like yeah. the entrepreneurial plague I yeah guess. So. It, it really is it is but it's so inspiring to see you and just to hear how you've genuinely set so many different goals for yourself in terms of okay well yes i'm doing my teaching artists but here's how i can turn x y and z up a notch for myself mm -hmm. and, and just yeah the, my role model in that is dominique and he is always looking for the next thing to do or the next way to flip this into another opportunity and it's not even he's very inspiring because he doesn't do those things for himself I know. he does those things for other people to have opportunities he takes his opportunities and then use the uses the residual to create an opportunity for someone else he's and i haven't even mastered like i'm working on it i haven't even mastered fully creating opportunities for myself to even turn them over for other people right, right. so i try to make sure that i like give back and do things in other ways but he is just like the mayor, like we were saying earlier. Yes, like he, he really is. is the mayor. Like if there was like a, if we had like a An like a creative like an artist town hall or something, yeah. he, would he would be the be, mayor yeah, of the artist. I, know, artists. I yeah. know. Him and I, we had tried for a long time to connect too, and once we did, it was just such a fulfilling conversation to have, such as as this one, because it just it opens your eyes to a different. Honestly, a different way of living because mm -hmm. I think in this day and age, especially, we were talking about this a little bit earlier. You get into once you become an adult, you get into this like nine to five grind mindset, and you lose sight of what you you love and what you're passionate about. Mm -hmm. And it's so important, and that's what Jam Hot is for me. Like it refills my creative juices because I'm genuinely speaking with you know talented people and sharing conversation about things that inspire me. So. Mm -hmm. It's so important at the end of the day, yeah, we all, you know, 
sometimes we do have to work that nine to five. We've got bills to pay, yeah. but never ever lose sight of what lights you up inside. And it's so inspiring and fun to watch you and, and Dom and so many other creatives genuinely exude that. So thank you for bringing that to our city and reminding younger generations and, and women, women, men of all shapes and sizes that you know, it's never too late mm -hmm. to fucking switch it up and, and do something new and and put it all out there because I feel like half of the time, the biggest thing that stands in our way is ourselves. Yeah, you know? <laughs> again, Dominique tells me yeah. all the time that I have to get out of my own way. It's like, so, that is yeah. like my mantra this year because I just, I have so many great ideas that I sit on sometimes because I'm like, oh, I don't know, da, da. you so know? So unsure. Yeah. yeah, and at the end of the day, I want to put out authenticity. I'm not going to put something out if it's half-baked or half-assed. Mm -hmm. So that might mean sitting on it for a little longer until I believe in myself enough to yeah. drop it in the air. So I think at the end of the day, we just have to, we have to keep that grind alive, but also do what makes you happy and mm -hmm. that's and that is what you're doing and that's why we're celebrating a year of being a full-time artist one year off the plantation yes <laughs> i love that well as thundercat mentioned tell us one more time about your workshop so and where people can find that information so um it's going to be a workshop downtown in lancaster at this place called red rose books um hosted by uh, liz and teddy who are the owners and it'll be every Friday evening from April 7th until May 12th. Um, we get started around 6. It's a two hour workshop. The first hour, uh, or it's a two hour session. The first hour is workshopping. The next hour is sharing. And um, there'll be like open mic open to the public. Um, workshoppers, uh, obviously they attend free. And then if you want to come in just for the open mic, I think it's like a paid uh, price to pay situation or yeah. pay what you think is yeah. worth or whatever yeah. and um yeah there's snacks there's refreshments um registration is through the red rose books website which is redrosebooks.com and it's r-e-a-d books.com um you click on their events tab and then i think it's the second option down will be um the workshop there's registration for the workshop and then right underneath that there's registration for the open mic and we just recently added virtual option yes I saw so that. if That's people exciting. aren't yeah if people aren't able to make the workshop in person there's a little comment box where you're just supposed to type in i'll be a virtual participant or a virtual or whatever that and is yeah, amazing i'm looking forward to it and there will be i'm also in the i'm not sure if i'm supposed to talk about it but i'm going to um there's gonna be another workshop happening in april at the ywca nice um centered around sexual assault awareness month Wow. Um, so it'll be, I'll be helping people try to use poetry as like a form of therapy. I love um, that. Alongside someone who's actually qualified, hopefully, because I'm not. <laughs> um, but yeah, but so more details about that yes. will be coming out soon. Thank you so much for just using your art to help people heal. I'm, Honestly, I'm at the end to, of yeah. the day, I know you probably don't realize it half of the time, but half of those people sitting in the audience probably have felt or dealt with similar situations and every time you get up there you're helping them slowly peel back those layers to, mm -hmm. to deal with their own stuff mm -hmm. so thank you so much for bringing that to our city guys as always i will link all of everything where you can find thundercat stay tuned because she's really just getting started mm -hmm. until next time see you later Right.